Hey chess friends, how's everyone doing? So I had this awesome game today against Shredder Chess, you know, that super strong chess computer. It's like one of the best out there, almost as good as Alpha Zero and LC Zero, anyway, playing against Shredder was such a blast. The game was just fantastic from start to finish, and I started my new chess channel where I will share chess lessons, subscribe the channel to become a professional chess player, E4C5, we have the French defense of Sicilian from Shredded, because he is from France German, here you can go with E5, let me show you the variation, play the Danish gambit and last day we saw C5 move from black, let's say if he captures the pawn, offer him and another pawn, by sacrificing two pawns you get an AWM. Sniper which is very cool very fantastic very amazing and very impressive, Bishop C5 and Black said, I wanna attack you by invading my queen and knight, yes attack me if you can, play castle, knight takes d2 attacks it but after takes if black plays castle he will see the chopping of bishop swords in the king position, g6 may protect the position but what about queen c3, she is coming through this highway track to checkmate you, black's position is just brusted. The best feeling in the world is knowing that you actually mean something to someone, or, as I robo I can feel the warmth of my word, we have the Sicilian defense as I mentioned, bishop c4 e6 and this is called old Sicilian variation, the Sicilian opening in chess is like the saying old is gold and gold is bold, it's classic, strong and has stood the test of time, just like gold, knight g4 by shredder to target the h2 pawn, and he have the positional strategy to eliminate the king's knight. b3 a6 bishop runs b6 h3 and look at his strategy, he played h5 to sacrifice his knight as a tempo, after you capture the knight, the horsey will be under attack and the h-file along with the queen diagonal will be miserable for white king, knight d2 and don't capture the knight, play with positionally, the idea is that after the knight settles on f3, you have the g5 pawn to once again attack the knight, so after g3 take take knight to h4 and black have a thrilling actions to nightmare the white king. Bishop e7 will seize the light square diagonal, Rook have an open file apart from the bishop and queen join attack on g3 pawn, and the knight have a great outpost on f3 square, in the long run, you can involve your another rook in sunbeam hot party, so back to the position, I played rook d1 knight to a3 and I immediately strike in the center with d4, b5 was possible but shredder played counter strike with d5, e5 bishop e7, you might wonder why the knight is still there, but no. He's coming to his grandpa's home, if you capture it then after knight to g5, bishop slaps bishop slaps, with this great Dalhousie army black can play f6, intending to open up the diagonal, or he would like to move his queen on f7, his only purpose is to push the gf pawn with rook. That's our idea behind the knight sacrifice and do you know a truth of life. Focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses, focus on your character, not your reputation, focus on your blessings, not your misfortunes, I played bishop a4 because I am blessed and this move is powerful, b5 and where should the bishop go? If you drop back your bishop then what is the purpose of the bishop being on c2 diagonal, bishop f4 rook g8, and what about if you capture the knight, let's do that, takes knight g5 bishop exchanges and in sudden move black will punch you with f6, try to involve the queen in h2 square, bishop runs f5 queen d2 center exchanges, look at the pawns on the g and f files. This position is very similar to the previous variation. Wow, g5, and if you capture the pawn then queen h7 will be devastating, king slides queen check king e2 takes, queen f3 is coming to checkmate you in two moves, so rook f1 is forcing move, b4 attacks the knight and if you dare to the save the knight, you will fall in trap, rook takes g5, winning in peace, if queen takes rook happen, knight d4 check, the king has to drop back, we will give him a check with the knight, and after a sudden move, we will engage the queen on e4 square, queen e3 knight c2 and that's it. You are gonna lose away your queen from the game which is just terrible, so back to the position, here I played something amazing, which you can't imagine, bishop takes b5, sacrificing the knight to involve the knight on queen side and advancing the pawn like it's a formula 1 racing car, it's outside pass pawn and how can you stop my pawn advancing, ok, you may capture the pawn when a pawn for free, but after the bishop exchanges, f3 knight b3. 
Two nights together in front of the king and queen are just devastating when there are no pawns to save them, take knight c3 and after a couple of moves later we will see the laser sharp move, queen to a6, attacking to the bishop, you may think of playing rook d7 but what about knight c6, look at this brilliant move, the queen can't capture it because the bishop, pinned, king moves out of the way, rook captured and rook, comes on b1 to pressurize the b7 rook. Game will be completely over for you and chess friends, if you are enjoying my content then please like it and subscribe to my channel, you will be blessed, so torch closes the position with c4, and I take the knight to get my material back, just terrific, rook h5 because rook h4 will meet up with g3, knight captured rook comes, f3 to create some space for the king to go for a morning walk, bishop h4, bishop f4 to guard the g3 square so the naughty rooks can't checkmate me in back rank. Knight e7 to eliminate the bishop and here I played something extraordinary ordinary move, you can pause the video and figure out that move, the move is, knight to f6, forking the queen and rook at the same time, the idea of that move is for black to capture the knight forcefully, this a check, I get a tempo and win back my material. Look at my two connected pass pawn along with this knight and bishop, just amazing, queen f6 knight check bishop goes to d6, imagine pushing your a and b pawns to promote them to two extra queens, it would be hilarious to see that happen in real life, queen g6, threatening to play bishop g3 and rook h1, the queen is protecting the g3 square, so I played bold move pawn to g4, that's the essence of king's safety, f5 bishop check. King a8 but king b7 was better, bishop back to f4 and the knight is coming there, shredder continuous to his attack, knight check king ups queen takes pawn, I am threatening to play queen b6 check which will lead into a checkmate, you have to capture the queen, there is no other option otherwise you will be checkmated, pawn captured and here you might think of playing b5, this move is a natural move but there is a problem with this move, rook g8 rook to g2, what about your king's position? He can't escape from this parallel black hole, and it will result in a drawn position, your first priority is to save your own king and block all the threats from your opponent. So wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.